welcome to video number nine of Spiritual Topics Tuesdays. Tonight, as always, we have a nice lineup of spiritual people, spiritual leaders that are ready to give their perspectives on the topic. And tonight's topic is religion versus spiritualism. And can you take part in both at the same time? So before we get started, what I'd like to do is have us all introduce ourselves. My name is Randy Sands, psychic medium, um, tarot reader, teacher of all. And uh, Greg, would you like to go next? Sure. Hi, I'm Gregory Ford. I'm, I live in Lilydale, New York. I've been there 19 years. I've lived there 18. And uh, this topic is interesting to me because it fits into why I chose Lilydale as a place to live. Mike? My name is Michael Robert. I am a psychic medium and a card reader and a creator of digitalsoulspace.org. Sarah? Hi, yes, my name is Sarah Sachs. I'm from Pittsburgh, PA. I am a medium, a psychic, tarot reader, and Reiki master. I do spend uh, a, a good part of the summer in and out of Lilydale, and I have uh, traveled abroad and studied my craft further in the UK and in the Netherlands. And Barbara. Hi, I'm Barbara, and I'm from Coral Springs, Florida. I am a Reiki master teacher and an author. And um, hmm, this is going to be an interesting topic. <laughs> okay. With that said, I you know think we'll just jump right in. Everybody will give their perspectives. Who would like to go first? We're going to do things a little different tonight. We're not going to have an order. Who wants to go first? <laughs> I will. I will, which is unusual. Usually I like to go last. Um, you know, this topic is something that I feel we could easily spend a week on, but I'm going to condense it the best, the best I can. And, and I can't guarantee you that that's going to be a whole lot. Um, when it comes for me, when it comes to organized religion, my issue is that organized religion tends to operate on the basis of fear rather than attraction. It's based on you behaving in a way that the religion deems appropriate. And should you not behave in that fashion, well, I don't know, I guess you're going to go to hell if you believe in a hell. Um, you know, if you practice mediumship, well, that's a problem. Yet there's tons of prophecy all throughout the Bible. So was it only meant for the people back in biblical days? Um, you know, does that tell us that we're lesser than those people? You know, that doesn't sit well with me. Um, my ideas of spiritualism is that we're more free to follow the, the path that unfolds for us as we move through the human experience. I do believe that it is possible to have a foot in both the organized religion as well as spiritualism. I feel that that's possible as long as you have boundaries and you're listening to the message and you're not taking on the dogma of the organized religion. And with that, who would like to go second? I'll go, um, I'm, oh, go oh, ahead, Robert. Go or ahead, Mike, no, I'm sorry. Ahead, <laughs> Mike, you're new with Robert. us. You've got the floor. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I, I actually have had both most of my life because I was raised in a paranormal household. Uh, my mother was Greek Orthodox and my father was Catholic. And they were both firm believers in the metaphysical and mediumship. I grew up 
uh, with books, surrounded by books on life after death, mediumship, uh, some of, you know, the old favorites, psychics and mediums uh, growing up uh, with, with them and, and seeing things, specials on TV and that sort of thing. Uh, and at the same time, my parents instilling a very deep faith in us, uh, mostly from a Catholic background. And then later in life, I actually chose personally at the age of 14 uh, to pursue, to, to, to be baptized in the Southern Baptist uh, religion. And I was there for a while and, and, and for a long time. And then I finally, until I, you know, I began to realize that, you know, as a member of the LGBTQ community, um, we're not really accepted in traditional religion. And so that was really difficult for me because I became suicidal as a teen because I didn't want to be, you know, gay or uh, a member of that community, uh, partially because of the negativity associated with it. But I have to say that traditional religion really helped me understand some of the aspects of spirituality and really had me with the sense of feelings that I had. And I, I think it's interesting as an adult, I can look back and I can say, wow, the magic of Christmas wasn't for me so much a baby Jesus thing, if I can say that, but more of a Yule thing. I, I, I feel that the energy and the magic I was feeling at that time of the year was more associated with Yule. And so I really believe you, you can have a hybrid. And I think you put it really great, Randy, when you said, as long as you set boundaries and you don't adopt the dogma, I think you can find a happy medium <laughs> in between the two. Uh, but that uh, you, you really need to, um, um, like you said, set, set your boundaries. I think that's amazing advice. All right. Uh, let's see. Who would like to go next? I'll go. I'll go now. Okay. Okay. Um, I do think people, and this is part of my cynicism, can be religious and spiritual, but I'm. I'm I don't think they're quite in the majority. Um, the one thing I do like about the faith of spiritualism, in its purest sense, uh, is that um, it, it, it's uh, it's okay. That's the one one faith that I have found that it's kind of okay for you to kind of go back to your religion of origin, it, you know, for the ones that are really secure in it. You know, every faith has their detractors. And I remember one time, in fact, the last time I was at uh, the Arthur Finley School in, um, in the UK, and it was coming up on Rosh Hashanah. I was raised as a Reformed Jew, and some of the Jewish people wanted to have a little um, a, a, a little service for the uh, new year. And they were uh, so wonderful and cooperative. The kitchen made some honey cakes. They got all the things for the ceremony. Our, um, our main tutor cut the afternoon class short. So we went into the, the interfaith center part of the uh, the thing and it, it was it was really lovely and it wasn't like oh well we can't be spiritualists and and do this so you know that was an example of the all in you know when something is all encompassing so um you know that that was a kind of an unexpected i couldn't believe how many jewish people there were from all over the world but i was the only american that was uh, of that faith so yeah, uh, I'm, you know, being raised in that uh, religion, it was, it's pretty, it's not like Orthodox where you've got all the diet laws and all this sort of thing. It was pretty, pretty mellow and non judgmental. But um, I, I guess the thing is that I got, as I grew up, I got really turned off with the evangelical Christians, especially the ones that were trying to convert me. That, the, you know, so that, that sort of thing. And I was wondering if any Christians could, you know, the, these uh, Christians, period, could be spiritual. And then when I was living in New York, I was uh, took a walk that was um, a number of blocks away from me down on the Lower East Side. And 
there was a big crowd of people with some media people there. And I said, what's going on? And they said, oh, the Carters are here for the ha Habitat for Humanity. They were refurbishing some of the old tenements on the Lower East Side to, you know, for the for poor people. And I looked up at the window and I saw Jimmy and Rosalind just hammering. I mean, they were really hammering and sawing away. They were really getting in there and were kind of and with other people. And I thought, well, I know that they're religious people, but talk about walking the talk. And I thought that was one of the most spiritual up to that point. I started to change my thinking. I was that that wow that now those now that's an example of people being religious and spiritual at the same time unfortunately i think they're kind of in the minority but i i'm hoping that that, that i'm wrong because you know when i have seen things on tv and facebook and that sort of thing in recent years and when they want you to go a certain way and women should be a certain way and that sort of thing. I think, boy, you know, when I watch stuff like that, I said, gee, that makes me so nostalgic for my atheist days. But um, I do realize that there are people and of all faiths, faiths, whether the Jewish, Muslim, Christian, that can be the biggest hypocrites or the else, or, and they can be, you know, and really do a lot of good for the community. I have seen that where we, where I've gone to temple, that they're very, very generous, very generous people and do give a lot back to the community. So I basically think that that's an important component it is doing stuff like the Habitat for Humanity and also embracing the best of all of the faiths but spiritual you know being spiritual is you know it, it's kind of an inside job it's an inside job but it's an outside job too so that's pretty much my view on that okay greg would you like to go sure i um by the way i hope you guys don't get any back feed because greg happens to be at my house in fort lauderdale and he's sitting on the other side of the wall. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's fine. <laughs> anyway, I, I grew up without religion whatsoever. Um, and growing up, although I've been, um, you know, I met different people from different religions. When I was a small boy, my best friend um, was Jewish. And we never talked about it. You know, it, it wasn't a thing. That was his thing. The The religion, the most that I've been, um, I would say, approached by is, is Christian. I worked for a Christian, Christian gentleman over in uh, Southern California, and he built a church, part of the church. And um, I did a lot of work on the church. He used to talk to me about it. And I always felt there were things I really liked about it. The thing I didn't like was the authority. I, I grew up without authority and I never liked authority. So part of, you know, the authority I didn't like and some of the rules and just the way it went, I didn't really like it, although I liked part of it. Um, I worked on Reverend Schuler's he had a retreat in Mission Viejo, and we worked on that for years. And um, it was a place where people with marital problems would come and, and heal and, and things like that. And I liked all of that, um, but I didn't connect with it completely. So I kind of shied away with it. Now, moving forward a little bit, I, um, I went to Lilydale during the summer of uh, 2005. And... I got a reading and it hit me. I was like, this is it out of all of the things that I've learned from all the other religions and things, you know, you learn things over the years of what they believe and things like that. When I got to Lily, I was like, this is it, you know, this is it. And when I went in front of the board, well, I went there in 2005 and I bought a house in 2006. That's how much I loved it. And that's how much like my whole life, I felt like I was walking this path of, path of spirituality 
not religion. And when I went in front of the board, they said, you know, why do you want to be in Lilydale? And I said, well, and this is how I feel, is I took the good from all of these different religions and they all added up to Lilydale and the freedom and the freedom to feel the spirituality. Now, that's what I initially went there for. And throughout the years, I've been, I'd have to say I'm a little disappointed in a little bit of it because I still feel like spirituality is, is huge and it can contain all kinds of things. And one of my challenges is I feel Lilydale has, when I went there, they, they had, there's no, is it dogma? Is that the term? And they, they really sort of preach that. Well, in my view, I see, I know they want to hold on to the history, but if you have, you know, if you, the way I look at it is if you have an old dial up phone, dial phone, old rotary phone, well, we have digital phones now. I feel like spiritual, spiritualism, just being spiritual, has grown with people's um, enlightenment, with spirit. And we're all getting more intelligent. And we're finding all these things that sometimes different religions don't want to recognize certain things in spiritual practices they don't recognize that they're like no that's the authority part um now i feel like well see spiritualism really is a religion isn't it so there was no dogma but in my view it's like they take up the dial up phone they're not recognizing the growth of spirit being spiritual and all the different things that go along with it they st they want to stay with the dial phone they don't want to move to the new they don't want to move and i think some i think religions do that they don't want to grow they want to stick with what's there even though we as human beings have been so enlightened and we have just you know we know so much more but the religions want to stay where they are. They don't want to recognize the, you know, forward motion with it. And, you know, and I think it's holding back a lot of people. Um, and that, you know, and I think being spiritual is, is an open door. And I like the open door. I like to be able to take the good because if I feel like I can grab the good from all of it, and use that as my spiritual practice and it doesn't have to be a religion um and it doesn't have to have rules all right barb okay you know i fight with this every day when people come into my son really you you believe me i go through this every day um i have a church right next to my center and that pastor won't even come through the door. Okay. Mm -hmm. If he wants to talk to me, he literally will stand at the door. Okay. Um, I grew up Catholic. All right. So um, all my life I went to church and I just feel that when you, when you go to church and you're, you're in that air, that zone, OK, there are the rules and they say, OK, you need to do this, 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 this and this. OK, but spirituality, you're working on yourselves. You're learning how to clear away all that stuff you no longer want. All right. So it's two different things. Yes. Can you do both? Yes, you can. But the church scares them that they don't want to do it because, oh my gosh, it's the devil's work. Basically, that's what I hear every single day, okay? But what they don't understand is being spiritual 
okay? It opens you up. It makes you learn to work on yourself within, okay? And that's important. Yes, can I sit in a church and listen to someone sit there and tell me that I need to do this, 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 and this? But you're not getting to the root of what needs to be done. Where spirituality, you can do that. Okay, it helps you to grow. And a lot of people don't realize that. I am a full-fledged um, minister, okay? And I still would say spirituality would be better for people to open up and to learn how to grow. And, you know, that's important. That is really, really important. So that's what I have to say. <laughs> so I agree with a lot of what Greg said, you know, <clears throat> Even in spiritualism, where it's said that there's no dogma, you're encouraged to be free thinkers, you're encouraged to question everything. I've learned that that's a catch-22. Because there is a dogma in a, lot of, in a lot of arenas where they, you know, modern spiritualists, but yet let's, let's stay back where the 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 you know forefathers of spiritualism started and if you are a free thinker and you do question things that doesn't set well but you know even with that said i feel that in spiritualism you still have a lot more freedom mm -hmm. to do the things that the barbara was talking about and I think in my mind that that's, that's vital. That's, that's vital to the expansion of self. I think, um, I think what you're describing, Randy, is, is especially when you were talking about the kind of dogma that may be associated with spirituality, I think what that sounds like you're describing is uh, what a lot of people I, I, that I've heard referred to as like a guru mentality is that you know in spiritual circles sometimes you have those that go around and they're like oh you know they come off as being spiritual but then all they're really doing is replacing a religion for their own people to follow them so it's they're equally as strict or equally as uh as um not in encouraging freedom and uh i think that's a huge problem with spiritual practice is that you get certain people that are like gurus and and they really want you to follow everything they say and they're a lot like no what i'm saying is the right way and it's just another religion for another really uh almost yeah, but, -like. but spiritual is supposed to be um learning how to grow, learning how Absolutely. to heal yourself within, okay? Yeah, it's an inward journey. I totally agree with you. Spirituality is completely inward. Yeah. But I think uh, like what, what Randy sounded like she was describing was like almost like a guru when mm -hmm. you have those spiritual people that come forth. And they're, they're coming, they're so popular in spiritual circles, right? And that's like in, in the community that mm -hmm. I built online, we always say our, our thing is we're all teachers and we're all students at the same time mm -hmm. because we're all learning from each other and, and nobody is really an expert when it comes to spirituality uh, because when push comes to shove, we don't really know for sure until we're all dead. Right. <laughs> and so, you know, uh, but I think there's that level of open-mindedness with spirituality and, and that um, I like, I'm a big fan of, Hey, there are no rules. You know, like we really like who are we to make up any rules? Right. So um, especially when I'm doing card reading, I'm like, there are no rules, you know, and some people may, you know, say to me, you know, like what if I'm working with tarot, um, some people will say, well, that's not what that card really means. And I'll be like, well, that's where I'm getting from it. So, you know, <laughs> you know, that's what I, I it's the freedom of spirituality that's so attractive to me as well. And, you know, and um, I think Michael brought up a good point because 
I think the problem with uh, whether it's spiritualism or, and I would say individual churches and synagogues of any religion, there, there's a lot of times they're only as good as the leaders and the people that, that you know, that get put on the board and that sort of thing. And it's been my experience, uh, and I'll keep it to spiritualist churches, is that, um, you know, I when I'm in that assembly hall in Lilydale, and they have all of those those um, portraits of the of these people that go back to the 19th century, I kind of commiserate with those spirits. And what I've picked up from them is that a lot of them were more free thinkers than a lot of other people that have been on the more modern boards. It's like, well, you mean. I felt like one of those ladies was saying, what, they don't allow card reading? We allowed that when back in, or they don't allow people to read the poem. Well, well they allowed that when back in the 1930s. In fact, I had a cousin who back in the 1930s as a young woman got a reading at Lilydale and had her palm read which would never have, I told my other cousin who told me that story, that would never happen today. But, you know, it's, it's, I, sometimes I feel as though those older, the, the, you know, the, the people that were around at the beginning and into the early 20th century, if they, if they had a good board and life was a lot less complicated, that in some ways they were more free thinkers than a lot of those that, went after us and I, I do have to say I agree with a we had in fact now her her picture is up on the wall because she passed away but Mavis when she said don't forget we stand on the shoulders of the great ones and I look around at those photographs on the wall and I'm saying yes and probably some of them would be a little bit upset about what they see going on in some of these uh, churches where people and that guru thing where they become leaders and gurus and all this sort of thing. And then that's when I sort of tend to, to back off a bit and just sort of go on my own. But I really feel as though the leadership and the people that are, you know, keeping these churches and organizations afloat really set the tone. And I've seen, I've seen spiritualist churches in various parts of the U S die because of bad leadership you know i i, I, I oh, really like I, I when the question was first asked you know religion or spirit spirituality right i kind of was thinking spiritualism like i just when i went to lilydale lilydale to me was about spirituality spiritualism is a religion and when i went there initially it was because of spirituality is what i agreed with and i was under the understanding that i was a free thinker that i my god was okay and that still could be you know mother father god that's a term a lot of people use there. Um, and Lilydale does profess dogma, but, you know, no dogma, but, you know, it is. It, it's, I think they've gotten away a little bit from spirituality. Spirituality is, is free thinking. Spirituality is personal growth. Um, and I think that's the important part. That's the part that I connect with. I don't connect with religion uh, you know the religion that's you know say you know with the, with the different things about it you know i connect with the the good from it not the authority of it goodbye and, and <laughs> it's it kind of confused me because as we were speaking i just realized you know what spiritualism is a religion it's mm -hmm. part of that authority and it's not as free as I initially went into it thinking. I thought it was, I thought I get to choose up to a point. Now, I'm not saying, you know, you know, I'm not saying it's anything goes, but I do think that it's very personal and, and it should be open. And I think it would, I, 
I think the community would be a lot better off if if uh, they opened up a little bit and move along with the times. You know, we have young people coming up and, you know, the young people are spiritual and but they're all over the place. And that's OK. It's OK to feel what you feel and and get what you get. And we all share together and diversity builds actually diversity builds cohesion uh it's not the other way around you know um and i think if we all could let people express their spirituality maybe we could all come together as humanity and build a, co a cohesive world with diversity because we're not going to get away from diversity and being in Fort Lauderdale the last few days, it's like the best thing ever because I feel like I'm with my people and my people are the different people. They're from Cuba. They're from Africa. They're from Peru. They're from, uh, you know, Puerto Rico. They're from Mexico. They're from America. They're from all over the place. And those are the people I connect with all the different diverse cultures really builds a beautiful world well it's and interesting you know, because the uh, the you know the free uh, the sp spiritualism came out of the free thinkers movement of the 19th century which was pretty much uh, ab ab about re rebelling against the victorian rig rigid mores and religion and that sort of thing and it, it, a lot of people like, uh, you know, your Frederick Douglasses and uh, Mary Todd Lincoln and Susan B. Anthony were free thinkers because they were abolitionists. They were uh, for women's suffrage, which, you know, at, at a certain point of history was really against the grain. And I think that's a that that's a part of the history of spiritualism. That's very important because it goes out to being involved with the rights that, you know, equal rights for regardless of race and sex and that sort of thing. And it, it, which is a real, really spiritual values. And, and it, you know, it is, it's kind of ebbed and flow with different wars, you know, and people, you know, when, when, when there, when we've had civil war, world war two, whatever, the, the faith grows because of all the deaths and, you know, and because the continuity of life is a very important thing. But it did start out as a very spiritual movement because of the social awareness of of that faith. And it, it kind of went into, and of all faiths, it, you know, following Martin Luther King and the um, civil rights movement in the 60s, you got every like the best of the jews and the protestants the catholics and prob probably a bunch of spiritualists too and basically that could and working on personal growth and that's the common denominator of the spirituality of all of these religions are those two components basically it's just sort of putting a different flavor one believes in jesus christ another one doesn't but they're there for the humanity. That's that's what really matters. I'd like to just add one thing to the spiritualism and spirituality. I feel spiritualism has stopped evolving in a lot of ways. And that's a disappointment for me because when I got into it, I didn't think it was going to happen that way. I thought spiritualism was evolving and with spirituality with the times, with the knowledge, with the, you know, awareness, with the all knowing. And I, I don't feel like it's evolving. Maybe it's more cyclic and maybe it, to be more optimistic, maybe it's more cyclical. I've, I, as I've looked at the history of spiritualism, uh, I've seen it's had, it's had its peaks and valleys and, Maybe this is a valley, but I feel as we go into the age of Aquarius that it'll we get uh, the true values will go on the upswing again, hopefully. I, I do too. I do too. I wonder, I, I'm interested in Barbara's opinion.
on something because she mentioned she was a minister. Mm -hmm. And um, I find or I found that as as growing up that organized religion often preaches your inferiority to a supreme being and how God and Jesus are the supreme beings. And, you know, uh, almost like you have to compete for your worthiness uh, sort of thing. And I feel like in, in spirituality, self-empowerment is huge Mm -hmm. and, and self, and I was wondering if, if you, if you, as a minister, how have you like dealt with those different, like it's polar opposites of they are opposite and to be perfectly honest i do not believe that spirituality is a religion okay because we work with empowering people we work with teaching them how to um how to heal themselves how to move you know instead of just staying put all right and having somebody say okay well you need to do this you need to do this no you need to do the work Okay, if you want to move, if you really want to have a good, you need to do that work. All right. And it's all about your power. And that's what we teach at our, I, I'm sorry, but I don't agree that spirituality and religion, and I just don't. Barb, Barb they're talking about spiritualism is a religion. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, that's a uh, Gregory. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm talking about spirituality. As in, he's you know, talking about spirituality. Yeah, and and, and you know, for me, and I agree. I keep it totally separate. It's I, you know I don't bring that in. Um, I don't know if you've all seen that meme. So you know, I that, teach people how to empower themselves, how to heal themselves. I don't know if you've all seen that meme that I love, where it shows the analogy of spirituality with religion. And it shows the goldfish in the bowl and Mm -hmm. it says, this is religion. And then the the whole bowl is actually in the ocean and the whole ocean is spirituality. Yeah. And, and it's so confining. I agree that uh, spirituality uh, there, there really are polar opposites. uh, Right. Definitely. For the reasons you just mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. I feel that spirituality, there's no limits. There's no boundaries. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, you move forward in the in the manner that suits you um, and with modalities that suit you. Um, my opinion of spiritualism, because I've kind of stepped back from it because I realized there was a dogma um, that there like I said earlier, you know, when you are a free thinker, which is your, you know, it's something you're told to be, or when you question things, it's it's not um, taken well. Now, is that a permanent thing? I I kind of want to get on the bandwagon with Sarah there and say that I hope it's cyclical, you know, and that it's a cycle, that it'll outgrow. Um. But my best suggestion to anybody watching is you do you boo boo, (laughs) you know, you do it your way Mm -hmm. in a way that you feel comfortable with in a way that resonates with you. And, you know, you're being honest and real in your growth. And if you can do that, then, you know, I take my hat off and and I say kudos to you. And I thought. Go ahead, Greg. I thought spiritualism was closer to spiritual, like the real free spirituality. Then over the years, I found out it isn't. I want it to be because I do believe in Lily Dill and I do believe in the reason I went there and loved it so much. And I hope that someday the free thinkers will come back to being able to, you know, feel what you feel and and your spiritual walk is fine, you know? And um, I, I equated them together actually right up until we started and the, and you spoke, I was like, "Uh Oh, you know, 
I just had to rethink everything and and because I kind of tied them together, spiritualism and spirituality. I thought they were a lot closer. And I'm not saying they're not close. Um, I thought they were closer. I think spiritualism is probably the closest to spirituality. I, I agree. Um, and it's an ism. Buddhism. <laughs> Lily Dale has been brought up, and I want to say that you know, as as much as there are some things that were pointed out here today, there's also some amazing aspects of it. Absolutely. You know, it does hold the magic of the pioneers and the energy that they created is still there. You know, so I don't want this to be just a, a I don't want it to seem like it's a bashing session of any sort. You know, it's just like everything else. Everything goes through its phases. I remember serving at a number of years ago. I used to serve at a church in West Virginia. Very nice people. And I, you know, and I have to say very spiritual people. They, they, I mean, and they don't have a lot there. And But they were giving, you know, they were charitable towards the community and just welcomed everybody in. And I used to really like to go there a couple times a year to serve and give the the ta the address and then the messages and all that sort of thing. And then I heard from one of the members I know on Facebook, they said, Oh, you wouldn't believe it. They're so that it's a new board and they're really nasty, this and that. You might want to wait a while before. And I thought, I've seen this before, you know, it happens everywhere. It happens everywhere. That's why I'm saying it depends on the leadership. You get a bad board. You hope it isn't going to be so bad that the church closes. But there, there isn't any place that you know where, that doesn't go through those cycles. And sometimes you need to just to, you know, kind of get rid of all the the bad vibes or that sort of thing. So it, it's every place has its ups and its downs. Uh, you know, it's not not and I when I. I've been talking this evening. I'm not si uh, singling Lilydale out. I'm just saying that various spiritualist churches go through. They lose their spirituality. Then they clean house, get some better people leading, and then the spirituality of the place returns. So it's that it happens with a lot of places. I, I think it's amazing that if you look at the Catholic religion, that there's so many practices in the Catholic religion that are downright witchy. And, and they, like, if, if you get, I did all this research on, on Catholic relics and the preservation of bones of people that they do and they use in rituals. And I'm like, wait a second, this sounds a whole lot like black magic or witchcraft, you know, and uh, I consider myself a witch. So, uh, you know, but, so this was even like if I was hauling around uh, corpses or uh, the bones of people, you know, it would be like, oh, okay, my that's not something I would do as a witch, is what I'm saying. And then you have a church that's actually doing something like that or mummifying. There's a, a church you can go to, in, in I believe it's in Rome, that, uh, that is, uh, oh, I forgot the uh, actual, um, oh, anyway, they, the whole church is just filled with corpses of people. And and it's a church. And it's a Catholic church. It's a Jesuit church. Thank you. Jesuit. And so um very it's it's fascinating though those kind of parallels, if you get into certain aspects of spirituality, where if we did it as individuals, it's considered dark and evil. But if a church does it, it's sanctioned, it's okay. You know, uh, liquefaction of of blood from a solid state to a liquid state through prayer and everything. Uh, that's something Catholics do in, in a lot of churches and in, especially in Roman churches. So I think that's kind of freaky. Uh, I think uh, I'm going to lose my dinner is what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's sort of like, I, 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 I kind of see it, it, in certain cases, I feel like we've diverged somewhere because there's a very mystical background to certain religions. And I find it, also interesting that in spirituality, we seem to be okay, very okay with 
Hinduism and Buddhism, but we've ditched traditional Abrahamic religions. And, um, and, and you know, anything Abrahamic tends to have been ditched, but we're referring back to ancient religions with, of Hind I consider myself syncretic. So I'm a little bit of everything. I practice a little bit of everything. I light a menorah every Hanukkah. Um, I call my friends up when we say the prayers together. And so I, I feel like traditional spirituality has kind of like broken off from a lot of Abrahamic religions, but we share. So I don't know if you're trying, if you, if you all get what I'm trying to get at, but well, there's know, a lot I of parallels. Exactly <laughs> what you're saying. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, Raymond Buckland was one of my best friends, you know, and he came to Lilydale. He's known as the father of American witchcraft, and he loved Lilydale, and he's he was really my best friend. He stayed at my house, and we had a lot of discussions about it, and I, I asked him about witchcraft and his um, take on it. A, a few things. We didn't really discuss it too much, but he said it's all about love. Absolutely 100% about love, and he really embraced spiritualism in Lilydale and I do too I love Lilydale um and I want to see the future uh become something big because I think spiritual spirituality is the important part and incorporate that into the spiritualism and and move this movement you know make the movement move forward um because i am a spiritualist right um and i believe in it and uh i want to see spirituality really come into it and be free thinkers again and and move it move move it forward well I, a, oh i'm sorry go ahead sir no i said it's sometimes you know some changes come about that are painful but but necessary you know that that's kind of like the 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 nature of the you know of this whole thing is that certain things that have to maybe change form and it makes people uncomfortable but in the end it all has a way of working out well i think in closing and else anybody else has a burning desire um what I'm going to say is I feel that religions, all religions, whether it's spiritualism or any other, the important thing is the youth and, and finding a way to welcome the youth. Because without the youth, what is the future? You can have a bunch of us our age, but, you know, if we're not – if we're not welcoming the youth and exp you know helping them to expand their horizons where does it go from there hmm. and i'm going to leave it there and else anybody has a burning desire no no nope. well then i can tell y'all hmm. i am sure that every one of us has the most sincere hope that you got something from at least one of our perspectives or the whole conversation that took place. And um, I know for myself, and I'm going to speak for everybody else that we're honored and we're privileged that you've chosen to spend some of your val valuable time with us. And with that, I'm sure everybody here would like to say good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Good night, everyone. May your week be as amazing as you. Bye-bye.